This are conference will now be recorded. We are switching books. We talked about the, the parable of the sower of the seeds. We we did that quite a bit over the last two weeks, but we're going to be switching to another story, which is another parable that Jesus told. And um, so we're going to be looking at it. And this is going to be in Luke 10. So if you get have your Bibles, uh, open up and turn to Luke 10 and... Um, it's going to be, we're going to be starting in, at verse 25 and we're going to be going all the way through verse 37. So 25 through 37 and we'll probably do this one over two weeks as well just to just to shake it up so we don't have to to hurry through it and there is a lot to talk about. So just a reminder the way we're going to do this is I'm going to read through it twice and as I read through it twice what y'all are going to be doing is is looking for things that stand out, like questions that you have it, have about the text, observations, uh, things that are interesting, stuff like that. And then when we, we look at that, we will come up with some questions that we will ask about the text. And then after we come up with a pretty long list of questions, we'll go back and work through some of those and, and just look at some of those answers. But this is a, it's a real easy way to do a Bible study to where we just read it. We come up with questions and then we uh, discuss it. Uh, and if you're by yourself, you can look things up or ask other people or read things in books, stuff like that. Um, but this is just a it's kind of a simple way to do a Bible study. So we're going to practice it again. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize my screen here. So I can look at it. But uh, Luke 10, 25 through 29, here we go. One day, an expert in religious law stood up to test Jesus by asking him this question. Teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus replied, what does the law of Moses say? How do you read it? The man answered, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Right, Jesus told him, do this and you will live. The man, had, the man wanted to justify his actions, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied with the story. A Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road. By chance, a priest came along, but when he saw the man lying there, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. A temple assistant or a Levite walked over and looked at him lying there, but he also passed on the other side. Then a despised Samaritan came along, and when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn, where he took care of him. The next day, he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, I'll pay you next time I'm here. Now, which of these three would you say was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by bandits? Jesus asked. The man replied, the one who showed mercy. Then Jesus said, yes, now go do the same. I think y'all have all heard that story again, but we're going to read it one more time. So as we're reading it, be looking for questions that you have, questions that stand out, and then we'll start listing those off once we get, get to that point. One day, an expert in religious law stood up to test Jesus by asking him this question. Teacher, what should I do to in inherit eternal life? Jesus replied, what does the law of Moses say? How do you read it? The man answered, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength in all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Right, Jesus told him, do this and you will live. The man wanted to justify his actions, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied with the story. A Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road. By chance, a priest came along, but when he saw the man lying there, he crossed over to the other side of the road, and passed him by. A temple assistant walked over and looked at him lying there, but he also passed him by on the other side. Then a despised Samaritan came along, and when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. 
Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn where he took care of him. The next day he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, I'll pay you the next time I'm here. Now, which of these would you say was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by bandits? Jesus asked. The man replied, the one who showed him mercy. Then Jesus said, yes, now go and do the same. All right, so there we have it. Um, so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to quit sharing my screen and, and we are going to go ahead and work on some questions. So, so what questions stand out to y'all as we, as we look at this? Anything stand out or anything that y'all want to look at more in depth? What questions did we see? What actions was he trying to justify the man? Okay, that's a good question. Kendrick said, you know, what actions was what actions was the man trying to justify? Yeah. Was it a true story or just something that Jesus made up? Um uh, Richard asked, was it a true story? Yeah, yeah. Was it a true story? I, you know, it's one of those things that I don't, it, it could be a true story. We'll go ahead and talk about this. It could be a true story, or it, it, I think it's probably a parable. It, it might be something that Jesus had heard, you know, about growing up. Well, yeah. Um, I, I would say that it's probably a parable just because Jesus taught so much in parables. And as we learned last week, it's so much easier to, you just tell one story and there's a lot of truth in it and you can dig down deep inside of it. But same with the Troy, the a story as well, if it's true. Um, but you know, I don't know. I guess that's a question we'll have to ask Jesus someday because <laughs> I, I really don't know. What other questions did y'all see there? And if y'all have any on the people that are online, y'all just unmute your mic and, and share it with us and, and we'll listen. But what other uh, questions or things that y'all see in that text? Let me see here. So the, the man answered well. Um, so was the man's answer correct? Yeah, he answered his own question, right? Or... Yeah, but was the man's answer correct? And does it go with, you know, what Jesus and other people say throughout Scripture? I think that's important to look at. Why was he testing Jesus? Yeah. Yeah, why was he testing Jesus? Um, one that I have is, what does it mean to love God with all your heart question mark soul question mark strength question mark and mind question mark and how do we do that um uh you know, the question, and love your neighbor as yourself, I mean, what does it mean to love yourself? If we're supposed to love our neighbor as we love ourselves, what does it mean to, to love ourselves? And do we love? And in today's world, I mean, the neighbor could be 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's so much stuff in life nowadays. Yeah. So, you know, who is... I'm lucky I got good neighbors, you know. Yeah, who is our neighbor? That's a good question. Because in this story, it's not... It's, it is not what the, the young man wanted to hear. And who is our neighbor? Um, and what is a priest? You know, what is a Levite? Because I think those are important, you know, and what is a Samaritan? Um, you know, you'd be thinking a real priest wouldn't be able to walk on by. You know? Yeah, you, that you would think that a priest wouldn't walk on by, right? I mean, it's kind of, well, why did he use the priest as an example? Because, you know, the priest is a man of God. I think he was saying that it's more important, loving how to be saved is more important on what you do than what you say or who you are. I think is what Jesus was saying there. You know, it's more than just going to church every day and, you know, so, but that's a good question. Um, kind of want to know about the bandits too. Like, okay. who, who were they here? Who were the bandits? And who are our bandits today? I think that's a good question. You know, how did the Samaritan take care of the man? So did y'all's Bible in verse 36, uh, no, in verse 37, does it say the man who showed him mercy or does it say the man who showed him compassion? What did y'all say? The end of verse. He said the one who showed him mercy. Okay, mercy. Does it, all y'all say mercy? Okay. Ours is a different version. Yeah, yeah, mine's, mine's a little different, so. I'm say you took pity. You know, what is mercy, pity? Mine's the English standard. Okay. Compassion. How much was uh, two pieces of silver? Yeah. They, they said here, people online, they said, how much is two pieces of silver? Well, on here it says it's a denarii. Yeah, but what? how much money is a denarii? Um, Or a denarii. Silver was a denarii. <laughs> I think it's like a, a denarii would be a measurement, like we would say dollar. Right. Yeah. So dollar, a de- or yeah, like we say dollar, Mexico says pesos. You know. Yeah. So yeah, I think it's just a measurement for their money. So, but how much was two denarii back then? All right. Well, okay, those, that's enough questions for today. But we can, uh, y'all, the we'll discuss some of these, and then y'all can also be thinking about this over the next week and think of more questions because that's your homework. Is that throughout this next week, y'all be thinking about this passage, you know, every now and then throughout the day. Like what I do is when I'm driving, every now and then I start thinking about it, and I tell the story to myself again and again in my head and I start thinking about other questions and 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 a lot of times it's in those times you know the second third fourth you know fifth time that you're thinking about it is when you kind of get to the get to some I don't know if they're better questions but you know deeper questions so um let's pick some of these out these questions uh the first one is uh 
that I want to look at is did the man answer Jesus right when he gave the when he gave the answer? And uh, what are y'all's thoughts? Did he answer it right? Did he answer it correctly? Yeah, he did. And uh, where do we find that? And y'all study Bibles, it might it might tell you. But in if you look in like in my study Bible, you can go back to Deuteronomy 6, 5 and Leviticus 19, 18. And if you go back to De Deuteronomy 6, 5 and Leviticus 16, 18, you can see one of them says that you love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the other one says and that you love your neighbor as yourself. So, so what happens here is um, Jesus is kind of combining these two uh, teachings uh, from the Old Testament into, and he's saying that these are the most important things. Uh, the, these are the most important things. Um, and this is what it's all about. So, so if y'all want to look those up at some time, it's Deuteronomy 6, 5 and Leviticus 19, 18. So was the man's answer correct? Yes. And Jesus says it was correct. Um, Jesus says, uh, do this and you will live. He's saying, yep, do this and you will live. Um, so, so one of the things, you know, um, we, we asked, uh, why was he testing him or why was he, uh, try, why was he trying to justify his actions? That was the first question we asked. Um, so why, why do you think the man was trying to justify that? Why would he ask that other question? You know, he could have not. Was he, why would he do that? Any ideas? He didn't like the answer, the first answer to the first question. So he wanted to ask a different question. Or... Yeah. Yeah. Kendrick said he, what, Maybe he was still trying to test Jesus, you know, I mean, because his first question that he tested Jesus, he answered right. So he didn't like the fact that that Jesus said he was right and agreed with him. So I guess he was trying to trying to test him some more, maybe, and uh, ask him some deeper questions, you know, but it says there, hey, y'all read y'all's verse 29. What does it say? Mine says the man wanted to justify his actions, so he asked Jesus. But he desired to justify his actions, neighbor, and he was my neighbor. Okay, so both of them are pretty much saying that he's trying to justify himself. So I think what he's doing is he he knows the right answer. He knows the right answer, but he's saying he wants to justify his actions. So he's saying, I want to make sure. I want to see if I'm right. You know, I want to see if I've been living this right. I, I've been, I want to see if I've been loving my neighbors um, the way that I should. Um, okay. Another question, uh, you know, about loving ourselves. Now, what does it mean to love yourself? And do you do a good job of loving yourself? I think most people probably struggle with loving themselves more than they struggle with loving others. Um, I know that there are times in my life where I am my own biggest critic. Like I, I, I get disappointed with myself more than I do other people sometimes. And um, I think that it's very common that we have a hard time loving ourselves. And, um, and, and I think that's important, you know, that, that we love ourselves. And um, so I think one of the things that we would think about when reading this is, okay, part of the law is that I'm supposed to love others as I love myself. So am I loving myself? How do I view myself? And what am I doing about that? So I think that's something, uh, a deeper level of this question uh, that we can look at. All right. Let's, uh, let's answer some of the just the, we've got about 
eight more minutes, but let's uh, answer some of the questions. Um, okay, the people that were involved in this, who are the people that were involved in this story? Just list them off. The priest. The priest. Uh, Levite. 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 The Samaritan. Samaritan. The Jewish man. The Jewish man, yeah. And the robbers. The innkeeper, yeah, the innkeeper. The robbers. The robbers. Um, I, you know, the, it's interesting. The robbers, this is what the robbers did. The robbers attacked, um, attacked him, stripped him, beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road. I mean, they did a lot of damage to him. Uh, I think it would say, but it it's it, they said robbers, so I, I think yeah, it. Yeah, but I don't think Jesus would be telling this story if, unless it was clear cut that these were bandits and they were robbing this guy. So I think if there is more to the story, I think that's why I think it's a parable. I don't think it's a right. true story. I think I think it's a parable. Yeah, that's how it's titled there. Yeah, but it it is it was very common in that I've I've actually been to this part. I've traveled down this road, and it's very rocky and dangerous. And there's lots of places where you can get uh, hijacked or uh, jumped. And and so now of course it's a highway, and you drive down it. But like you look off, and if you were like weaving in and out on a donkey 2000 years ago, it could be a hard time. But the, but this, this is what they did to them. the bandits. You know, who were the bandits? We don't know who the bandits were, but they were mean and they didn't care anything about this Jewish guy. They could care less about this Jewish guy. They, they beat him. They robbed him. They took all his clothes off of him and they left him half dead. Um, so I guess the, the question that I have today is, you know who are our bandits today? Who who do who do things to us? Not physically, but sometimes it could be physically. But most of the time, I think in today's world, we have people that beat us up mentally, emotionally. They strip us emotionally, and, and they don't care anything about us. They just use us, and they you know. And I'm just saying this: if you have people in your life that are, you know robbing you, stripping you, beating you up, and leaving you half dead and don't care anything about you. You probably don't need to have those bandits in your life. So, yeah. Yeah, a lot of times it is family. I mean, you know, Jody's on here, but she has to go to court all the time with people that do that to do their to their kids or their spouse, you know, so yeah father to you know to their kids or spouse father daughter son yeah it's bad so um so i would say you know one of the lessons that we look at here is you know if you have bandits in your life today you need to make sure to not be around those bandits not to be around those bandits okay looking at the other people real quick um it was a jewish man um so he was traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. So he had been in Jerusalem. He'd probably been in Jerusalem either doing business, visiting friends, or he might have gone to the temple to worship at the temple and to offer sacrifices. But he was going home or going to Jericho from Jerusalem. So, uh, so Jerusalem is in the middle of Judea. And... Um, and and at this time, you know, that's the the two tribes that were left. Judah and Benjamin were left. The other ten had been wiped out. So so he was right there in Jerusalem, and he was a, a Jewish person. So uh, he had faith. He practiced. We assume that he was worshiping, and he also um, probably wore distinctive clothing that people could tell that you know where he was from. You know, oh, that's a Jewish guy. Or you know stuff like that. So, so um, so he's either traveling home, whatever. He was going to Jericho. 
Um, so that's that's important because when we look at the other three, uh, we see where they are. The priest, you know, what is the priest? Uh, the priest is somebody that represents the Jewish people on behalf of God. So the priest is somebody that if this guy would have been at the temple the day before or two days, you know, whenever it was, <laughs> the priest, if the priest had been working, which we assume that he was, um, he would have been the one that would have gone to God on behalf of that man and presented an offering to God on behalf of that man. Helping that man love the Lord his God with all his heart, soul, mind, and strength. Helping that man. So the priest is somebody that was an intermediary, intermediary uh, between the Jewish people and God. So um, they would offer the sacrifices and, and things like that. So this is somebody um, that that takes this this uh, this commandment of loving the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength um, very seriously. Um, but Jesus adds the second part to it and love your neighbor as yourself. So he's probably trying to do a good job of loving the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Um, but he clearly isn't doing it. So that's it. The period. Levite, a Levite would be Javier in our church. <laughs> Levite is the worship leader. <laughs> Levite, the Levite is the guy that goes and, and helps. He's the assistant. He helps with the worship service. He, he gets the offerings. He brings them in, and, and he's but he's somebody that hangs out all the time too. He hangs out all the time in the when he's called to work. He is in the temple and he is serving the God, serving God. And and his whole uh, job description is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And it's something that if people were to look at him, just like they would look at the priest, they'd go, "Oh, that guy, he's got it figured out. That guy, he's got it figured out." Samaritan. Okay, Samaritan. Um, this will be where we end, but I should have brought a map. I'll put a little map up here next week and, and I'll do it. But, but you know, here's Jerusalem and, and here's, uh, here's Jerusalem. Here's Jericho. Here's Samaria. And, um, and Samaria, um, is when when the Babylonians came in and they conquered Jerusalem 400 years earlier from this, and they took all the people, um, all the smart like the Daniel and ne Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, all these people that you've hear, heard about in the Old Testament, and they went to Babylon and they were held captive. Uh, the Babylonians they took all the the smart educated people from Jerusalem and Judea back and took them prisoner. They left people that were just uh, like they took care of the crops or they just were there to, they didn't have specific skills. They weren't trained. They weren't artisans, you know, stuff like that. They left them and said, hey, y'all just take care of everything. So the Samaritans were the people that got left when all the people that were smart and educated got taken off to Babylon. So the Samaritans, what they did is they, over that 400 year period, uh, they began, because everybody was gone for about 90 years and then people started to trickle back and they started to rebuild Jerusalem. But over this 400 yard people, the people that left, they began to, to, to worship God the way that they thought they should. They didn't have a priest. They didn't have a Levite to do it. But they began to, to worship God the way that they felt that they needed to do it. So they did it at a different place. They didn't do it in Jerusalem. They did it at a different place. They were still worshiping God, but they began to change the rules quite a bit. And, um, and when all the people came back from Babylon and began to come back into Jerusalem and Judea, they started arguing with the Samaritans saying, hey, y'all are doing it wrong. You know, y'all are doing this wrong. You're not doing it right. And they were like, no, we're doing it right. This is the way we've always done it. And um, so so they began to get in really, really bitter arguments with the, the Samaritans and the Jewish people began to get in really bitter arguments about how to worship God. You know, how to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Um, so 
so so some said we do it over here so, you know there's other texts where jesus is talking to the samaritan woman at the woman at the well you know and and so there's this big and the, and it got to the point where they didn't like each other i mean it wasn't that they didn't like each other when jesus would walk through samaria his disciples would be like what are you doing we don't eat jewish people don't even walk through samaria we walk all the way around it and so they really disliked each other so this samaritan he was not Jewish, and not only was he not Jewish, he was, in that day and age, he would probably be considered an enemy of the Jewish people, and then that there is this ongoing feud, okay? And it had been going on for, for many, many years. So the Samaritan, um, I don't know, in today's day, what would that look like? I mean, I, I don't know, who would be a Samaritan, Kendrick, in today's age? I don't know. Somebody from a different country. Um, you know, I don't know. Politicize it, you know, a, a Democrat or a Republican or, you know, or. Like the Balkans, they have, and like Iraq and all that, because everybody fighting. Yeah. All this mm. Yeah. So um, uh, they shared here that it could be like people in other parts of the world that are actually actually in wars like in iraq and iran and they're they're fighting amongst each other and fighting with their neighbors so um it is pretty bad but so the samaritan is really important to have a good understanding of who the samaritan is and he is not somebody that jewish people would look up to and go oh that's a good dude that's a good dude north korea, yeah north korea south korea yeah yeah so it was somebody that, that they did not look at uh, favorably so knowing that um so just this is something to think about we've already gone six minutes over but this is something to think about between now and next week uh, the priest and the levite really looked like they were loving the lord their god with all their heart soul mind and strength but they weren't loving their neighbors themselves Jesus um, is saying that the Samaritan, when we get through with this, he did love his neighbor as himself. Um, while it might not have looked like to other people that he was loving the Lord as God with all his heart, soul, mind, and strength. Um, but so we'll look at it. We'll look at that more. So, so um, it's, it's really interesting. So what's more important, you know? So what's what's more important in this story? And we'll we'll look at that more next week. So all right, do y'all have any other questions or comments or anything that uh that y'all can think of that y'all want to talk about or add to our list? All right. Well, we will go ahead and well hold on. Here's one comment. Let me see what it says. Jody said, who beat the man and why? So that was a long time ago, and we Jody. tried to answer that. <laughs> Sorry, Jody. I didn't see your tat, chat message. So, all right. Well, we'll go ahead and stop the recording now.